Welcome back everyone right now at 11 a brand new edition of Fugitive Files and tonight's cold case is bringing us to the shoreline a woman killed by a drunk driver and the man responsible now on the run most likely thousands of miles away from Connecticut and tonight a brother and sister's emotional plea for justice and why police say they need your help. It was a Sunday evening, July 2013, just after 7. What was supposed to be an off-roading joyride in this Jeep Wrangler quickly turned into a nightmare. It's, it really, it's okay. 49-year-old Leah Coleman, a mother of two, was thrown from the open-top vehicle after it rolled over. The driver was her boyfriend, 42-year-old John Shepard. She came in through the back um, and said, we have to go, we have to go, we have to go to the clinic. Leah, Leah's been in an accident. As Coleman fought for her life, Shepard was arrested for driving under the influence. In the arrest warrant, an old Saybrook sergeant said he found Shepard to have glassy bloodshot eyes and was slurring his words as he spoke. This gravel driveway near their home on Essex Road in Old Saybrook, now the scene of a crime. And Coleman lost her fight at the hospital. She went quick. There was no, she did not suffer. She went very, very quick. After Coleman died, Shepard's charges were eventually upgraded to first degree manslaughter. But when police went to serve him, he was nowhere to be found. We tried to make contact with him and family members, but no one, you know, they said they didn't see him and we haven't heard or seen from him since. Shepard had seemingly vanished. And while police believed he had left the state, there were little to no leads as to where he might be. Coleman's brother and sister were distraught at the thought he would never pay the price for what he did. I think he's a coward. He's got a man up. If we were to walk in here right now, a man up, I might change a little bit. But there was a break in 2017 after unconfirmed reports of Shepard living in Florida, Old Saybrook police learned he was arrested in New Mexico in 2015. Police worked tirelessly to track him down there with no luck. It's been very difficult. It's been almost seven years now of trying to find this person to bring him back to uh, go to court. The hot tip went cold, much to the disappointment of police and Coleman's family. It's not gonna bring her back, but him running like this, I, I, I have no sympathy. I really don't. And that's why your help is needed. The police are hoping those who know something say something and that the information can lead them to Shepard. Because justice needs to be served and the only way we can do that is with the help of your viewers. As time continues to pass, Coleman, the youngest of five, will always be remembered by her siblings for her smile and they take comfort in the memories. We had these made for all the women. A um, little bit of the ashes are here. So she's with us in our hearts all the time. But they are desperate for closure. Just help us be human. Call. Mm -hmm. The other hope, maybe Shepard is watching and will turn himself in. But if not... Eventually we will find him. All right, so here's where you come in. If you think you have information to help police find John Shepard, dispatchers are taking your tips right now. Turning now to an Eyewitness News exclusive. Thank you all so, so, so much. A cold case is shut and a manhunt is over and it's in large part thanks to you. We so appreciate it. After a fugitive file story aired last Thursday, dozens of tips poured into Old Saybrook police and get this less than 48 hours later, a man wanted in connection to the death of his girlfriend was behind bars. This picture seven years in the making. John Shepard in handcuffs arrested by police in Florida. That's the back of a Broward County Sheriff truck. He's in custody. He is. Awesome. Awesome. Leah Coleman's brother and sister brought to tears after learning the news. Coleman was killed in 2013 in an off-roading accident in Old Saybrook. Police say Shepard, her boyfriend at the time, was driving drunk. The car flipped over and she lost her life. He has been wanted for manslaughter ever since. 
he just proved what he was, worthless. A coward. Coward. And to not come forward and face the music then, he's going to face it now. On Thursday, we featured Shepard in our series, Fugitive Files. And tonight's cold case is bringing us to the shoreline, a woman killed by a drunk driver. And the man responsible now on the run, most likely thousands of miles away from Connecticut. And after our story aired, Old Saybrook police say calls started coming in. So your newscast was not off the air yet, and we began receiving tips. Chief Michael Spira says each and every tip was followed up on, and just a day and a half later, those tips led them to Shepard. And this works. It works. I did not expect it to be this fast, but oh my gosh. No. On Saturday, Shepard was arrested. He had been hiding out on a boat in Fort Lauderdale. So there was a lot of resources that were put into this, not only in Old Saybrook, but certainly in the state of Florida. It was a team effort from police to our viewers. And now, while Shepard awaits extradition back to Connecticut, Coleman's family no longer has to wait for justice. From the bottom of my heart, I can't even begin to thank all the people involved in this that have gone above and beyond. It's just amazing. It is so nice to give that family a, a sense of peace and maybe start to the road to closure. So thank you so much for all of your support and thank you to the police out there who worked tirelessly on this case. We have one case down, but we have much more work to do all month long. Channel 3 is partnering with the Connecticut Police Chiefs Association to help bring fugitives to justice, and we still have two unsolved cases. It is Thursday night, and that means another edition of Fugitive Files. We are partnering with the Connecticut Police Chiefs Association to help bring fugitives to justice. And tonight we are tackling a cold case out of East Hartford. It is the unsolved murder of a U.S. veteran and a father's plea for justice. The state of Connecticut offering a reward of 50 thousand dollars for information leading to his killer. It didn't take long for Mark Marino to know his son Dominic was destined to serve his country. He started off very, very young, having uh, an affection for America and, and the flag. As a bodybuilder, Dominic had to lose 50 pounds of muscle to join the U.S. Air Force, and he did. Nothing was going to stop him from helping others. What did serving his country mean to him? Everything. He protected our freedom for six years. Much of that time, he was stationed abroad. But his service ended when Dominic was injured by an IED while on duty in the Middle East. One went off nearby, concussed the, the vehicle they were in, and he hurt his knee and his shoulder. Because of those injuries, the military retired him and gave him disability. But on Sunday, November 18th, 2018, everything changed. Marino wasn't killed in action overseas. The 30-year-old was murdered in his own home in East Hartford. Imagine you're pulling into your neighbor's driveway because yours is blocked off by yellow tape and there's 20 police officers and fire trucks and your son is dead in your house. Dominic's brother Vincent was the one who discovered him at the home they grew up in together. A horrific scene at 48 Suffolk Drive. And I was tied up. Um, he was pretty lumped up from getting beat on and he had a bullet through him. East Hartford police say Dominic died after being shot in his side. They were quick to say they did not feel anyone else in the area was in danger. So the, the location of the incident, um, it's, a, it's a very quiet neighborhood. Uh, this was clearly an isolated incident. These pictures of the crime scene show those responsible broke into the home through the front door, and there was evidence of a struggle. Knowing someone knows something is frustrating, and Dominic's family is desperate for answers. I'm sure somebody in my neighborhood heard my door get banged in, my dog bark barking my crazy, and a gunshot going off. I'm sure somebody had to hear that. And that's why he needs your help to solve his son's murder. He says the loss of Dominic and not knowing who killed him is all-consuming. What do you think he's thinking right now, seeing you fighting to still find his killer? He'd, uh, he'd probably want me to rest a little bit. But Marino says he can't rest until Dominic can rest in peace. This is the portrait we had um, made of him for his uh, 
his wake and the funeral. And uh, this is the flag that was uh, draped over his casket. Dominic is buried at Connecticut State Veterans Cemetery in Middletown. A life lost too soon. A life that still needs justice to be served. And that's why he's relying on you and the East Hartford Police Department to make that happen. It could be anywhere in the state of Connecticut where someone could have heard something or has some piece of information that they can bring forward to us to help us resolve the case. If you killed my son and you're out there, no one thing. The police and other agencies are definitely looking for you and you will be caught. It's just a heartbreaking situation. Here's where you come in. If you think you might have information to help them catch the killer, dispatchers are taking your tips right now. The number is there on the bottom of your screen, 1-866-333-9372. Again, what we know right now, the murder happened back on November 18th of 2018 at Dominic Marino's home in East Hartford at 48 Suffolk Drive. There's a $50,000 reward right now for information leading to a conviction in connection with this case.